Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspective. We'll be talking about, uh, we've seen uh, the increases in the budget. We've also seen what direction, direction the budget is likely to take. We'll be talking about the ramifications of the increases itself in the budget. We'll be talking about the ramification of the measures that the government has taken uh, as far as pro poor uh, policies the government has and the areas that the government has targeted in terms of the subsidies. Um, of course, we've also had uh, the, the finance minister hinting at uh, more hard decisions, what this will mean as far as the inflation is concerned um, and the measures the government has taken to try and control it. Of course, a lot will depend on global prices. All of that today um, on Perspective. I have with me Mehtab Heather, who is a journalist. Thank you so much for joining us today. We also have with us Sadiq Ul Farooq from the PMLN. Thank you for being with us. And uh, Dr. Kes Aslam who is an economist. Thank you for joining us. I'll go to Mitab Sab. Mitab Sab, uh, in, in terms of what this budget aims to do um, and, you know, the measures that the government has tried to take considering uh, the situation at hand, uh, the realities, the economic realities we are grappling with as a nation. Overall, how do you look at it? Mitab Sab, can you hear me? G, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, I can hear you. G, Mehtab Sab, as far as our situation, economic situation is concerned at this time, uh, as far as inflation is concerned, as far as the global prices are concerned, the global trends are concerned, how do you look at the measures taken, uh, you know, the cuts in the budget, the direction the budget has overall taken? Um, uh, can you comment on that? Actually, you know, ma'am, uh, the commodities and fuel prices in the, in the international market are going up because of the uncertainty. And the World Bank uh, latest report also showed that till December, there is no possibility that the prices will be reduced or come down. Okay. So in such circumstances, I think uh, the government uh, uh, of Pakistan has uh, taken the measures uh, to, to cut fiscal deficit, and that would be the major uh, step towards reducing the inflationary pressure. But on the other side, okay. uh, the government has also reduced the subsidies mm. uh, of the power sector and uh, uh, the PUL uh, prices. So the prices okay. is, are expected to go up, mm. but there is a need, and that is the most uh, uh, good thing which, which, which they have done, that they mm. have come up with the targeted subsidies. Okay. to protect the vulnerable and the poor segments of the society. Okay. Now, uh, because there is no other choice but to take tough decisions, but there should be ele an element of provision of targeted subsidies because there is no other choice. And Pakistan, you know, we are an import-dependent country, so that, that should be the approach. And another thing which I want to share with you, that the, the government has also taken very good steps towards increasing the direct taxes. And it is the concept of the taxation philosophy that there should be more taxation uh, on rich and affluent class, and that money should be utilized for protection of the poor segments of the society. On that note, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to go to Siddiq ul Farooq Sahib. Ji, Siddiq ul Farooq Sahib, uh, of course, the, one of the main themes of the budget, uh, according to the government, is the fact that they've tried to tax people who are, um, you know, the upper classes, uh, the better uh, the classes, who, uh, you know, that are doing better and try to, you know, keep the minimum burden on the lower classes. But do you think that alone will be sufficient to shield us uh, from the sea of inflation that may uh, arise considering the global trends, considering uh, the prices that are rising globally? Thank you, Maro. You know, present coalition government has a very limited time at the right. most 14 months hmm. and within these 14 months the government has to fight against all odds hmm. the prevailing economic situation is very difficult and most of the difficulties in all fronts were created by the outgoing government of Imran Khan right. so at best the present government 
has tried to 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 tax the affluent class the rich class mm. Mm. and to benefit the poor mm. poor class mm. have not mm. so i think this budget there there all all measures taken by the government proves that their intention is very good they are trying to solve these problems at this mm. at the same time the imf conditionalities are there the imf conditionalities were signed by the previous government but they didn't implement it so that mm. burden we have to shoulder and mm. we shouldered it i hope that this the 15% increase in salaries the mm. tax system etc etc will mm. help the wide economy and we will move inshallah in the right direction and after few months 3 to 6 months you will see that pakistan is put pakistan is put on the rails leading to uh, to to better economy inshallah okay let me let me uh, uh, i'm going to go to dr kais aslam ji doctor sahab do you agree with what sadiq ul farooq sahab is saying in terms of uh, you know he's saying that the pro poor incentives uh, that the government has tried to to include in this budget are are garnered to to sh- to perhaps help uh, of course uh, us the poor classes in terms of you know uh, the low classes deal with inflation do you think that again do you think that considering the overall situation at this time that will be sufficient to deal with the kind of increase uh, that of course you know is imminent even in the upcoming months thank you uh, i i i don't think that uh, the uh, overall uh, hmm. implementation or direction of this budget will um, help the poor although i i agree that uh, the government is trying to protect the uh, most vulnerable and poor but mm. at the same time there are two or three things that have to be uh, seen number one government itself has said that they are going to bring down the economic mm. growth rate gdp growth rate which was 6% to 5% mm. that means contracting the economy mm. the government to the central bank has already increased the interest rate to 13.75 by almost 14% so the cost of doing business or cost of taking loans has increased and uh, uh, the prices of uh, energy resources especially petrol mm. and mm. Uh, uh, diesel mm. as well as gas and uh, electricity have already gone up and they are going mm. to go up the government has said mm. that that is going to increase or that is increasing the the general uh, price levels of almost everything i call it a ripple effect but doctor uh, the, even the otherwise taxation, ji even no, otherwise no, I, listen, of course the taxation that, that, that the government is doing is mm. is uh, rational but but the problem we have two very important problems number one mm. is that we have to uh, bring down the prices so the consumers can uh, giving uh, focus subsidies is a good thing which the government has done this uh, mm. time but it has bring brought down the health budget i don't know why uh, i have not understood that the education is provincial subject so we will see that later on because the quality of education is very bad but uh, when we are talking no, about we, but in terms in of in terms of the education of course we've seen the prime minister categorically said that there are no cuts there um, as far as this budget no, no, I, is concerned I, i agree with that uh, uh, the whole thing is not the cuts the whole thing is how much children out of school would be brought back to school or at least given skills so that they can be part of the economic life but i'm hmm. coming to uh, the, the cost of both doing business and the cost of uh, uh, buying things of demand mm. both the demand mm. side and uh, supply side are going to become expensive mm. Mm. foreign investment might become cheaper mm. but till such time we do not solve uh, these two three external uh, budgetary problems or rather external balance of payment problems like we have to earn dollars 
and therefore mm. we have to produce more exportables. Mm. We have to uh, do substitutes with uh, at least uh, the, the, the cooking oil and uh, um, the, the, the energy from domestic sources so that mm. we can save these two. We can't save on machines. We have to yeah. buy technology. We have to buy machines. So there is a trade-off and the taxes that I have seen is, I, I agree with those taxes, by the way, that they are going to hit uh, the black money that was parked in the uh, so-called so construction of land uh, mm. uh, in the previous government. Right. It is going to hit uh, the, the upper middle class, although the government employees' uh, wages have been increased to 15%, and mm. the uh, tax slab of zero tax has been increased to 12 uh, uh, 100,000 that means mm. 100,000 a month but at a higher level if you get that 15 percent uh, uh, increase in uh, salaries mm. you will be going Gee, dr kes i think there's a problem with the uh, audio Gee, uh Mehtab Sab, Mehtab Sab, do you agree with the analysis as Dr. Kes is saying? He's saying that we are looking at considerable difficulties overall, um, even with the kind of incentives that the government has doled out for uh, the law classes, for those likely to be most affected. Actually, you know, when Pakistan experienced uh, growth in the range of 5 to 6 percent, mm. uh, there is always two imbalances. Uh, which were surfaced on, uh, on the economic front. But mm. One is called the budget deficit, and the other one is the current account deficit. So this time, when PTI government uh, doled out different incentives in the last budget, mm. it resulted into creating imbalances because Pakistan witnessed highest ever absolute number in the budget deficit mm. of hitting 5,000 uh, billion rupees. And mm. on the external side, the current account deficit touched 16 to 17 billion dollars. Mm. So the problem is that we cannot uh, achieve high growth uh, without generating domestic investment and savings. Our, okay. our savings and investment ratio is one of the lowest in the region. So that is the problem. Mm. But uh, how we are going to achieve our high growth we will have to rely on the consumption and uh, higher imports. And because mm. of higher imports, uh, it created uh, problems on our external front. The budget deficit, why budget deficit increase? Budget deficit increase because we failed to generate uh, resources, uh, our mobilized resources, and we are spending too much. We are living behind our means. It mm. resulted into giving more money into the hands of the rich people. And what the rich people are buying, they are buying everything, the imported uh, products. So mm. it resulted in our increased reliance on imports. So that is the problem. And without resolving the structural problems, Pakistan cannot achieve sustained and inclusive growth. That is the problem that we should achieve higher growth, but it should be sustainable. Because right. if it results into the creation of imbalances, it is not a, a Sam, there's of a lot of quality. criticism on the last government's uh, assertion and they're saying that you know their their growth was 4.9% um, and the fact that it was artificial in a lot of ways uh, would you agree with that this time the growth uh, was 5.79 percent close to 6% okay. the okay. problem is that it was low quality growth because growth, uh, the good quality growth creates job and mm. it increases the income in, into the hands of common people. So it mm. didn't happen. <laughs> it increased mainly because of consumption mm. and higher imports. That is called the flawed growth. And mm. another thing which we didn't mention and anyone, uh, the rebasing of the national accounts also jacked up the GDP growth figure. If okay. we didn't uh, uh, rebasing our accounts, the growth mm. would be on the lower side. So the rebasing also helped to achieve, the, to show the higher growth trajectory. Okay.
let me come back to you. So, Dikul Farooq sahab, uh, in terms of the budget, also one of the main concerns that the government must have, you know, when it is alluding again and again to the fact that there will be tough decisions. Do you think that there are likely to be mini budgets in the offing also? I can't rule out if situation changes. Hmm. I mean, petroleum prices are high due to uh, Russia and Ukraine war. If hmm. this war is put to an end, I right. think prices will come down. So that will have that will definitely have a positive effect on our economy. Hmm. Then we will lower down the petroleum prices. Okay. But if God forbid prices go more high, go hmm. higher, then I personally cannot rule out a mini budget. So you are saying but that it's contingent on the global situation overall? If, if something is not in our hand, in the hands of government, it's beyond mm -hmm. its control, then what can government do? But, but Sadiqul so Farooq sahab, this is what the last government was also saying, you know. Pardon? This is what the last government was also saying. They were saying that it was not in their control. But last it was... government did not. Last government, despite signing conditionality with IMF, didn't mm. implement. Okay. Had that government implemented those conditionalities, the situation would have been different. Mm. Now, all difficulties, we have to shoulder these difficulties. But mm. the situation beyond our control, what mm. what we can do even but even United States of America and other countries can't help this situation, mm. especially created due to price high, uh, petroleum price high. But and when that... I refer to the two overall policy, you. Yes. As far as uh, let's go to Dr. Kess, uh, doc, uh, Dr. Kess, we were earlier interrupted uh, when you were talking about. Uh, overall, the situation in the economy, you were also saying that, you know, of course, it's going to matter, which is also echoed by Siddiqul Farooq Saab on contingent upon a lot of international uh, factors on the price hikes, global price hikes, all of those things. In the fact that in the kind of situation that, that the government is in, of course, it has to balance uh, whatever it can do for the people in uh, the lower in income groups with uh, the con conditionalities that have been set by IMF at this time. Considering that precarious balance, do you think that they've been able to do justice to whatever measures could be taken at this time? Dr. Kes, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, it was a question to me. Okay, G -G. let me say this, that... Uh, um, I think that the government is going to try its best, but uh, um, the, the, the uh, problem is that uh, uh, until such time, the, uh, and the, the bureaucracy and the judiciary, uh, the, the mechanism that has to enforce these, and especially the FBR, there mm. is such time that they do not work honestly and for the purpose to which the government has made its policy, uh, we will have problems. But at the same time, I, I believe that the government has put into place uh, through this budget and its policy um, mechanisms which is going to um, try to protect the very vulnerable. But, as, uh, but when the government is going to increase the prices of oil, uh, petrol mm. and uh, electricity and gas, it is going to have a ripple effect on prices. It is going to uh, increase those prices. It is going to increase the cost of living, and it is going to increase. So those uh, who will be hit, they will be the middle classes, because the middle classes are going to be taxed through indirect taxes. The upper middle classes and higher classes are going to be taxed through uh, uh, direct taxes. And the rest of the uh, economy is going to be taxed through uh, the Sorry, increase okay. in price of energy me... and petrol. Right, so Dr. Kess, overall, itself. in terms of the kind of measures that the government has taken, um, you know, in uh, terms of uh, the measures like, for example, taxing uh, the higher classes, uh, ta you know, imports, we've seen the ban on imports, measures like this alone, of course, are not going to be able to adequately deal with 
the situation where it is. So, in terms of the rocky road that is ahead, uh, what is the best way to insulate uh, people at this time to, to try and damage control? Because essentially what it looks like is that the government, the kind of situation that it landed in, it's really just trying to do as much damage control as possible with whatever measures it can take. I agree with you, uh, the damage control the government is trying to do. So the measures that the government should take is, uh, um, which the PMLN government always took uh, in the past, is built roads, built uh, these uh, infrastructures, built uh, uh, the dams, uh, mm. uh, secure uh, uh, water through reservoirs. That will mm. uh, uh, initiate uh, uh, an injection into the economy for the, for the labor class, for the daily wages, where mm. the private sector is not going to come. If we mm. are going to only uh, uh, depend on um, our exports of textiles, that is not enough for the rest of the economy. Uh, we have to invest very seriously in our agriculture as mm. well as in uh, producing electricity. I want to, right. uh, I want to, to come to particularly... Gee, I want to come to that particularly. I'll come back. Uh, let me go to Metab Heather. Metab sir, do you think that in terms of agriculture, uh, what are the, you know, in terms of the incentives that the government is giving, in terms of the measures that it is taking, do you think that uh, those are likely to yield the kind of results that we are looking at? Because we have been successively uh, looking at governments saying that they are trying to give incentives in, in, in agriculture, an agro-based economy like Pakistan. Unfortunately, that hasn't really translated. It hasn't translated to the farmer. It hasn't translated overall uh, to give the kind of boost one would have liked to see in the agriculture sector. Do you agree? Ma'am, that, that is the most crucial question. Because, you mm. know, uh, at a time, for, for instance, mm. in the outgoing financial year, we imported commodities to the tune of 11 to $12 billion. Mm. So, uh, $1 save is, is very important at the moment. Because, you know, mm. in, in August uh, 2021, Pakistan's foreign currency reserves held by the State Bank of Pakistan stood mm. at $20 billion. Mm. But now, it's depleted to $9.2 billion. Mm. So more than $10.5 or $10.8 billion was depleted in last uh, eight to nine months period. So okay. it's alarming. So what is the solution? Solution is focus on agriculture. It is a neglected sector. For instance, the government... But do you see the measures, do you see the incentives and measures taken at this time focusing on agriculture significantly, sufficiently? How do you see it? Yes, I, I was just uh, 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 telling you one thing. This mm. time, uh, the government has been on the seed development. Mm. Seed development for, the, for uh, uh, canola and... Uh, because, you know, hmm. at, at the time, hmm. at this time of moment, when we are hmm. talking, the problem is the palm oil, Indonesia slapped ban on export of palm oil. It can create a major crisis uh, in, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the importing countries which are hmm. uh, getting uh, from, from Indonesia. So hmm. there is a need to diversify <laughs> our... Uh, uh, on, especially focused on agriculture sector, especially mm. give incentives to the farmers mm. to 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 to, uh, to to have a self reliant uh, uh, on account of the farm oil. Otherwise, okay. it would be a major problem. Right. Let me let me uh, go to Abdul Jalil Saab, who's also with us. He's a senior economist. Thank you for joining us. Jalitza, we're talking about, I hope you've been following, we're talking about the fact that as far as the economy at this time is concerned, certainly it is, uh, you know, we, we, are, we say that we are an agro-based economy, but we haven't seen the kind of incentives one would have liked to see in the agriculture sector. We haven't also seen them translate to the farmer. Do you think the incentives in this uh, budget are targeting the agriculture enough? They are, uh, you know, trying to boost the agriculture sector because the government is saying so. As far as uh, 
the budget is concerned, I think that the government has made some attempt to keep mm. balance between the expenses and the income as well. Mm. This is the biggest challenge. Mm. But still, it's very difficult to remove the deficit which they are experiencing, okay. which means that the expense, they will have to incur more expenses than what they are earning. So we have to raise the level of the earning by mobilizing our indigenous resources. And okay. one of the important indigenous resources mm. lies in agriculture field, which you are rightly hinted at. Right. The agriculture in fact, you know, if you see during the time of Janam Musharraf mm. uh, and the World Bank, then right. with the help of the Ministry of Finance produced mm. a poverty reduction paper in which mm. it was declared that the agriculture carries a rich potential for developing the economy of the country. Mm. And the government, then the planner mm. and the economists, they in fact uh, recommended that we must try to upgrade the uh, upgrade the facilities which we are providing to our farmer, medium farmer and small farmer. Okay. Number one. Number two, we must provide uh, the rural area a very effective connectivity mm -hmm. with the markets as well, with the major markets, well, including international markets, so okay. that they should be able to sell their perishable goods, I mean, fruit and vegetable and etc. etc. And there is a rich potential, especially for absorption, absorption of the agricultural goods in Chinese society. Dilitha, when we talk no. about, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but when we talk about, uh, you know, the fact that our agriculture has potential, you and I have also now been talking for, I think, more than, you know, every time the budget comes yes, in, sir. it's one of those things that we talk about, regardless of who's in power, which government is there. Um, it seems to be on the agenda. It, as far as this government is concerned, they've also categorically come out and said so. Even the last PMLN governments, they have been focusing on agriculture. But some, in your opinion, what are the crucial reasons we haven't been able to garner our agriculture sector? The first thing, the first thing what you find is that the govern, our governance system and the practices, they are very hmm. complicated. Hmm. They, they, they need to be simplified, number hmm. one. And secondly, all stakeholders in the policy frameworks, they are not included. This okay. is second. Okay. Number two. Hmm. Number three, law, law and order situation in our rural area hmm. is very unsatisfactory, which okay. is a, which cast a deep stabilizing influence upon okay. the, you know, the, the, the working culture of the, hmm. the, the farmers. This is very important. Hmm. I mean, the government, and, and then the government has not, taken the due care of the needs of the small farmer and the medium farmer. For example, in East Punjab, the, 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 the Indian uh, the government, the, what they have seen, um, they have a very limited space for production of a food, that is East Punjab, and they have to feed huge number of the people. What they have, they have provided incentive by making them uh, supply, uh, the supply of electricity free, number one. And number two, they have ensured them a market for the absorption of their good. Number three, they are adequately compensated every year. Number four, at a concessional rate, they are provided fertilizer. Mm. Number five, they are provided special technical supports, especially, I mean, the mechanized to, mm. to uh, in order to, to, to momentize the, uh, the um, uh, momentize the <coughs> um, mechanization uh, mechanization drive of agricultural system. This is very important. Mm. Unfortunately, we have also taken many steps in this direction, and I've said long before India could do, during the time of General Ayub Khan, Field Marshal Ayub mm. Khan, then the government took a lot of step in this respect. Mm. But unfortunately, that momentum could not be kept. Okay. These are the main diff These so are the areas. So you're saying that whereas the measures have been uh, on the go, you know, by and large, in the right direction, there, there, they haven't been consistent. They, they, uh, not consistent, and then there is some real problem with compliance system. Okay, well. okay right. fair enough. I'm going to go to uh, Siddiqul Farooq Sahib. Siddiqul Farooq Sahib, uh, your, uh, in terms of, you know, one of the main concerns, of course, that, that uh, PMLN at this time has overall, the government, the PDM also, uh, you know, is likely to have is how this is going to affect your voter base, how this is going to affect your, you know, of course, the next election. Like you yourself said, you know, you're looking at a 14 month timeline at the most. And when you're going to go into elections, taking these tough decisions, unfortunately, uh, wasn't uh, something that could be avoided in the interest of the country, in the interest of, uh, you know, by and large, getting the economy, like you said, at a sustainable um, pace. But how do you how do you think it's going to affect that water base? Political party and a coalition government 
like the existing government will mm. also consider these political objectives but you know inshallah we have another budget before us and that will be given in 2023 but for this budget you know we have taken into confidence all segments of society especially industrialists traders and investors so after their inputs the budget was finalized and it is it has been appreciated by everyone you refer to e- economy with special reference to agriculture ji so all inputs whether it is machinery seeds or and uh, medicines etc hmm. are uh, all duties have been removed hmm. so now hmm. these things can be imported free of duty similarly special emphasis has been given to uh, renewable energy hmm. especially hydel projects and special funds have been allocated for to complete hydel projects before the target dates and you know prime minister shahbaz sharif uh, punjab speed he is well known for punjab speed even in china so hmm. when he says this and already he has given full confidence to bureaucracy he has improved governance within 8 weeks so the implementation level will in, inshallah also be uh, good so with all with this uh, policy and with these measures the outcome from this budget as i have already stated after 6 uh, months you will be you will see that it will be appreciated by the government and also that have nots have been given special concessions the uh, those who draw almost 40000 hmm. salary 2000 special uh, grant for them and 15% increase in salaries similarly betul mal benazir income support program utility stores corporation health facilities etc etc these will help solve the problems of poor uh, classes so i Let think me... the impact the impact overall will be very positive inshallah okay let me come back to you i'm uh, going to go to uh, dr kes uh, and i'll come back to you ji dr kes uh, in terms of the measures that uh, uh, sadiqul farooq sahab is talking about do you think it satisfying the imf conditionalities because there are some concerns there also the government is going to be able to satisfy uh, imf conditionalities because by and large of course the budget has they've tried to be conservative in what they can burden the people with you know whatever minimum they could uh, do to satisfy imf while keeping of course uh, the people's interest that also has been that's a huge consideration for the government do you think they'll be able to satisfy the imf conditionalities because there are, there are concerns there also look as far as the, uh, the restraints are there as far as the imf conditionalities are concerned a large amount of those conditionalities will be satisfied because you are trying to increase your tax base but yeah. at the same time when you have uh, increased your uh, direct uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, when you have increased your current account mm. uh, the deficit might not come down Okay. Uh, the the, the, the uh, subsidies that have been given to the poor and the vulnerable classes are also as per uh, uh, agreed with the imf so i right. believe that that is okay but that does not help the economy go into a certain direction the economy has to go into the direction when we in our four factors of production land labor capital entrepreneur we make them productive we make them uh, cost effective and we mm-hmm. so but, uh, by increasing our interest rates and by increasing our tax uh, uh, the indirect taxes we are not going to uh, uh, help neither our uh, uh, in, invest new investors nor mm. are we going to help the uh, the uh, lower middle classes uh, i understand the salary classes have been given a certain rebates and uh, 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 salary hike mm. but, but that is not going to affect uh, the the increase in petrol prices and energy costs mm. will affect both mm. our demand side on the lower level and our investment side on the upper level 
but uh, but your question that we have satisfied the imf conditionality most of them are uh, satisfied uh, in the mm. context and i think imf is going to give them some protection or even if it doesn't come up with an agreement with them it is going mm. to ensure that uh, you get loans from saudi arabia and china but uh, yes. the question is that uh, mm. will that help the economy the restraints are too big the uh, uh, economy when it, it is going to shrink Uh, the money supply when it is going to shrink the inflation when it is going to go high the cost of energy which is going to go high the, uh, then the ripple effect of uh, price rise is going to be quite uh, painful to our uh, lower classes mm. uh, i'm talking about those who are above the level that we are going to protect uh, but mm. uh, again answering your question uh, uh, to a large uh, extent the uh, the government has tried to Uh, abide by the conditionalities of uh, IMF. Uh, let not me come, all, let, but let most me go of to, them. Uh, let me go to Abdul Jalil Sahab. Jalil Sahab, we talk about, uh, uh, you know, we have talked about the government trying to keep uh, those classes below the poverty line, segments of society, you know, try to concentrate there. They've tried to give incentives there. But what about the middle class? How do you look at the kind of price hike inflation that's likely to also impact the middle classes? This is a very, this is really very, this is a question of deep, concern as well the middle class every government tries to defend them mm. you know by taking several measures in a, so that they could be saved from the onslaught of various vulnerability caused by high inflation mm. now we are experiencing the same situation right now also the salary class apparently is getting the salary yes. also and that's why you must have heard that in of developed economy like united states of america and england mm. they mm. have given they have issued a special financial support system mm. to uh, you know and to compensate the middle class and a lower middle class from all the losses so we're talking about were. welfare state th that's it but the question is that here in our society i will say the government have taken some of the action but i believe that the middle class and the lower middle class can better be it can be saved or it can be protected from the negative impact of inflation through certain uh, by promoting the culture of M smes okay. uh, you know small and the medium venture mm. this is very important mm. right but provided the government is able to act like a partner and make some substantial financial input through mm. easy loan system because Obviously, we were hearing prevent. about smes uh, during the last government also but that didn't really translate uh, that, that because there was a serious disconnect between mm. the stakeholders and those who are the end user of communicate okay. there was a serious disconnect and communication gap as well mm. that is why i always say when you make frame an ideal policy all right and you create a model framework for that but uh, when it comes to implementation. the implementation there the people face lot of problem mm. the reason being that they are our end user is not fully trained mm. he is not fully trained to ex, uh, you know f neither he understand those policy nor he has got a skill mm. or in ability to understand the system as well so it is the duty of the government functionary to you know to make their services available at the doorstep of such people mm. they should go they should persuade people and they should use the in, you know you know they should use the pocket of the influence in the rural area in order to mobilize proper culture when we talk But about mobilization said. sadiqul farooq sahab is talking about uh, shahbaz sharif sahab's traditional role uh, you know he's also his his reputation precedes him in the sense that of course he's a doer he's also uh, been seen as somebody who does you know on the ground he's very much uh, focused on trying to uh, you know get the results as as uh, uh, a politician of that kind of uh, caliber do you think that that is uh, going to translate to this kind of mobilization in the rural sector which uh, jalil sahab is talking about and it's going to uh, manifest uh, this kind of uh, uh, the, the measures that are being taken they're actually going to bear fruit uh, to that kind of level uh, sadiqul farooq sahab sadiqul farooq sahab ji you you have asked me the Jeep. question Jeep. okay okay um i i thought that you are asking this question to abdul jalil sahib okay now first of all um, maruf in my opinion and observation ji this government has taken care of all segments of societies okay and 
after taking into confidence all important classes. So mm. I hope mm. that if it is implemented in letter and spirit, mm. and God forbid, if the international situation doesn't go in the negative direction, rather in positive direction, positive results will be seen and so our Nikhil economy Farooq will Farooq you are saying that it is, it is implemented in letter and spirit, but you of course know that everyone is expecting uh, your government, Shabazz Sharif Saab in particular, to ensure that it is implemented in letter and spirit, right? Expectation, of course, they are expecting, but mm. nothing should be expected, expected beyond expectations. Everyone knows okay. the difficult situations prevailing mm. in country, mm. but inshallah, they, they are watching the activities, the programs, the implementation speed of the mm. government and mm. with their hopes and cooperation, inshallah, mm. they will, they, 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 uh, this government will come up to their expectations. Right, let's hope so. I'm going to Thanks. go to... Ji, I'm going to go to Dr. Kess. Ji, uh, Dr. Kess, when you talk about, you know, structural problems, which are also a huge issue, they have been an issue, uh, you know, traditionally they have, they've remained an issue. One can't say that they weren't an issue in the earlier government. One can't say that they weren't an issue even 10 years ago, 15 years ago. They, they are something that we've experienced for a while now and unfortunately it's also one of those things that we haven't been able to change do you think that uh, those of course and you know do you think that those structural problems when we talk about those long standing standing deep rooted structural problems we are going to we can expect this government to make inroads there considering of course the time is short and they are dealing very much with a precarious situation Look, uh, uh, the expectation from the government are, are too great. The restraints right, okay. to the government are uh, uh, very big. Uh, the, mm -hmm. It has to juggle. But uh, the, 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 the thing that uh, we uh, still have, the problems of governance, the problems of policy, the problems of deliverance, the mm -hmm. problems of export-import gap. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of problems. The will might be there. But uh, mm. we have to very seriously uh, uh, see that uh, the, the, the money that has been allocated for the poor goes to the poor. The mm. uh, policy that is there to increase the economy so that uh, we can export more things has to be there. If, if we do not see these things, then we are not going to achieve the results. And I believe that the, uh, uh, the, this budget is too big. Uh, um, to be uh, uh, th 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 that it will be uh, it will come up to the expectations of uh, those who have the expectations the government okay. might have a good heart and a good mind but uh, the implementation so you you talked about the structures the structures are bad the, the structure mm -hmm. whether they are of the economy apart from textiles uh, mm -hmm. whether they are of the agriculture whether they are of uh, 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 deliverance or supply chain they all have to be uh, uh, aligned in a way that things happen. And the time frame of one uh, uh, year and two months is uh, too big, a, a too small a time frame to come up with these uh, expectations. But uh, I, I wish this government uh, uh, well so that they can try. I think their heart is in the right place. And I hope that they can uh, uh, come up with solutions that has the, this is an extraordinary situation and the extraordinary situation needs extraordinary solutions and right. unfortunately i have not seen those extraordinary solutions as far as structural reforms are concerned in the in the whole context unfortunately so I, that's I, all I the time that, that we have thank you so much for being with us Ji, thank you for joining us, Mehtab Haider Saab, Sadiqul Farooq Saab, Dr. Kes Aslam, Abdul Jalil Saab, thank you for being with us today. As far as, of course, uh, the measures taken by the government is concerned, there doesn't seem to be any doubt that they're the hearts in the right place. They've been taking, they've taken them uh, with a view to keeping 
uh, as much uh, the lower classes as insulated as they can from inflation, from price hike, from all of those uh, realities, unfortunately, that are also dependent on the global realities of today. Uh, but of course, it's a challenging feat for this government. It also remains that, you know, as far as inflation is concerned, the economic realities are concerned, they can do um, as, as much as possible, perhaps. The expectations are very high. Let's hope that they can translate those into the implementation also. And we can actually uh, see it translate to uh, the lower classes. We can see all these measures actually bear fruit. Of course, they were, Mifta uh, Ismail, the finance ministers, also categorically said again and again, it still remains a tough period for Pakistan, economically speaking. And we must all be ready to face the kind of challenges that are likely to arise in the next couple of months. Thank you so much for joining us today on Perspective.